warm welcome then to everyone to our first Payroll Bureau Association PBA webinar. I am thrilled to welcome everyone and uh, please bear with us. This is our first. We have worked super hard on this and we are very nervous. Uh, so thank you for your patience. Uh, and I think I'll kick off today with a huge thank you to everyone for the hard work over the last few weeks, in particular in the payroll sector. I'm conscious it's not been easy. I would probably say it's been the most testing time for us all in our career. And that was after RTI, auto enrolment, and our lovely clients. But again, I think the furlough period has definitely been a very, very hard time for us. So well done. Just in terms of housekeeping, you should all be for this webinar. If you're not, I can kindly ask you to mute your mics and just turn it on uh, should you need uh, to get involved uh, and chat at any point in time. We do have the chat function available for you all to use uh, and you can contact a member of the PBA team directly or you can raise your hand for assistance. Uh, my lovely colleague Tracy is on hand to support you there, our internal IT expert on Zoom, but I don't think she'd like me saying that. Uh, but anyway, moving on to our agenda, we have four speakers today. So we have myself, uh, Michael McAllister from Johnston Carmichael, I'm based in Glasgow. We have Barry Matthews, our Bureau Strategy Manager from Pay Circle, who is our guest speaker today. We then move on to Neil Cameron, the Head of Payroll for Sheen and Tate. Neil will be talking a bit more about the future of PBA and how you can get involved and how you can fit in. And then we'll move on to Haig Kingston, Head of Client Services at Paycheck Limited in London to run through some key questions uh, that we have hopefully from you throughout this and how you can get in contact uh, with the PBA team. So Tracy, if you wouldn't mind moving on uh, the slides for me there. And uh, I think I'm gonna pass it over to, to Barry Matthews now. Uh, so for those who, who don't know Barry, You've done very well in managing to avoid him. Uh, he does punt people down in the payroll sector very quickly. Uh, but Barry had 15 successful years at Star Payroll, uh, now known as Iris, as an account manager, and now working at Pay Circle as our, as our Bureau Strategy Manager. And in recent, I think, key, key achievements for uh, Barry would be his published article in Reward Strategy and his recent podcast, uh, with Nick D, one of the recruitment experts across the UK. So over to you, Barry, and a warm welcome from the PBA. Cheers, thank you. Uh, I really appreciate that. Hi, everyone. Uh, quite a few familiar faces there for me, which is great to see, and some new ones, which in some ways is even better. But uh, that's the salesman in me. I, I do apologise. <coughs> Tracy, who am I? If you don't know already, I'll um, we'll scan down through the list. Yeah, I'm your strategy partner at PaySocial. We are a partnership, uh, so we, we all pull together. I've been sort of working, <laughs> when I looked at these numbers, it got a bit scary. And obviously, when looking up, you wouldn't possibly believe that uh, I could have gone straight from nursery into business to business uh, uh, software sales or um, management, but so I did. Uh, but uh, the last 17 years are what it's all about, really, for me, and particularly, I suppose, the last five of working with bureaus uh, like yourself, getting to meet people like you and to understand nothing about what you do, payroll-wise. <laughs> you, you astound me with that knowledge. Uh, but pr pretty well everything about the, the environment you live and work in and how you operate. And, and um, it did lead me on to coming up with ideas as to how you should perhaps better uh, be organized as firms, but also to share best practice between firms as I, as I um, moved uh, between my clients, potential clients and so on and so forth. I'm, I'm pretty active on LinkedIn, <laughs> it's fair to say, I think. And uh, so please do scan down and have a look at some of my, uh, some of my thoughts. Uh, hopefully they will resonate with you as, as viewer people. That's what I aim to do. Uh, yes, and I'm a cyclist and uh, I do like a glass of nice wine and I've collected the odd Michelin star, not through my cooking, but through my eating. So that's that's the person who sits before you and uh, 
if we want to step forward, I mean, I'm taking you really here through my history of getting an understanding of your working lives. And uh, this is payroll, really, the slide you've seen now. And uh, anybody who thinks, oh, I've seen this before, the, the fact is, yes, I'm lazy, but um, the, the facts are the same and they were, they're, they're equally true today as they were. So this was payroll maybe in the 70s. Uh, looking at the faces that none of you will remember that, but you might have heard your grandmothers speaking of it, possibly. Um, but that was payroll in the 70s. It was, you know, underneath, it was a reasonably complex thing, but pretty well serviceable by anybody with uh, a degree of understanding about what they were trying to achieve. You could, you could create a payroll, you could put on a few pay elements and run it yourself in the same way you can change spark plugs and top up your radiator here. But if um, over the last 30 years and it sort of sneaked up on you and you, you, you did realise that every year there was a tiny change or a major change and a bit more change and more going on and more going on. And so if you press the button, yeah, <coughs> over a period of years, you've ended up sort of uh, by stealth really being responsible for managing this incredibly complex machine. And that's happened over, over a considerable period of time. And I think a lot of you just didn't sort of, we well, did realize, but you just carried on because that's what payrollers do. You just get on with it. And uh, you proved that through April um, and May. So we want to just jump forward to uh, an acceleration really so this is where that process that we just saw encapsulated uh, in two two uh, images that thing is what really triggered i think major change right across the piece and that's when i really really started getting interested in what seeing what you were, were doing because i saw firms responding and dealing with it well firms and firms struggling and everything in between so i became interested in what's the difference between you two why are you struggling why are you succeeding? Why are you in fact capitalizing on this? And so that's when I really started to write stuff and uh, to share knowledge between bureaus as to, well, do you know, they, they do it this way, do you study really? And I suppose that in that lies the seeds of where we are today, because none of you know what everybody else is doing and you all really <coughs> want to presumably and will value that uh, aspect. So, <clears throat> Really, in your world, there are three main players, I think, and these these are the these are the key areas I think of that you will need to address in the PBA. That's my advice to you. Um, and this is the number one, to be honest. Accounting partners dominate the marketplace uh, for for whatever reason. It's historic, uh, but they do, and therefore they have they sort of set pricing. They set expectations in the marketplace and they set, unfortunately, unrealistic ones because of payroll is just one aspect of a much broader service. So their domination of the market, I think, needs to be addressed. It's got to be addressed, obviously, um, in a very diplomatic manner because most of you are employed by these people. But we do need to educate uh, accounting partners. If you skip on, this is a fundamental thing. Um, no payroll partner graduated with a degree in payroll. I've been pulled a I've been pulled um, pulled up for saying that, but it's true. Even though one or two will have covered a bit of payroll, they didn't. They came out bursting with confidence and knowledge of profit and loss and balance sheets and corporate finance and really, really important things. Um, so if you don't, and I'm speaking from experience here, if you don't deeply understand the subject, you can't promote it properly, you can't sell it properly, and you've no chance of managing it properly at all. Um, and therein lies uh, part of the problem. If I just want to step on. Yeah, they're more interested in high value services and they <laughs> they still insist on, I think about 60% of you filling in timesheets, you know, in six minute slots when you, in six minutes, you can do 20 jobs. <laughs> it's the nature of your work. So how the heck can I split that down into a timesheet? That's a, an underlying issue as well that, that we need to address. You don't fit in and uh, into their mindset um so good luck with that the other the other people involved in this process are you if you'll step on trace thank you yes it's you and i'm going to point the finger a little bit here at you uh because this is give you just pause there that's delivering first class service it's what you do 
uh, you do do it. You do it nine to five, or in fact, during April, you were doing it 6 a.m. through to 10 or 11 p.m., delivering first class service all the time. You always bend over backwards. You always go the extra mile. You always say yes. I'm afraid you've created something of a rod for your own back there. One, one thing I do I get with, the, with the car analogy, I use it quite a lot. And one example I would give you, if you turned up to get your car serviced at 5.25 when the car showroom closes at 5.30 and said, right, I bought my car for today, if you could service it, please, they would say, go away. Now, clients send you data at the last minute on the last day and say, oh, can you just process it? And you say, oh, go on, man, yeah, go on. And therein lies one of the problems. You are one of the problems. And... Um, it does create this self-fulfilling spiral, which has been on, um, of over-delivering, it's underpriced, it's undervalued, under-understood. Um, and the other problem I think you have as bureau people um, is metronomic processing. There's always another job to do. So your opportunity to go, hang on, how are we doing this? Can we do it differently? Can we do it better? You don't really get one there's always another job to do. So, uh, and that's because generally bureaus have been staffed at just enough, always just enough people. There's never been in sort of any padding, if you wish. And so there's no opportunity for you to pause, re-engineer, rethink, rework, and redefine your processes. So therein lies another issue, I think. It's not all negative because bringing you together is about making change happen. So if we can jump onto the Last slide, I suppose employers are the third element in, in the triumvirate and um, they're part of the problem, but we've, there is a way forward. Um, that some of them did payroll themselves, you know. <laughs> I've seen Sage, Sage advertising quite a few years ago saying, yes, it does it all for you. No, it doesn't. You need talented professionals like you to do it for you. And uh, Sage is, like any generally piece of software, is a piece of is, is something that is a tool that requires a skilled user. So they don't understand it. They don't value it. They're told by the accounting people, oh, yeah, yeah, well, we'll, we'll do that for, uh, you, can have, you can have the payroll for nothing. And they're in setting unrealistic expectations of price. And obviously, <laughs> some of you are running hundreds, possibly even thousands of payrolls. And they think they're the only one. <laughs> uh, and they do that partly because you've made them feel that way, because you deliver such good service. And, and I suppose that's what led me to this, because I hate injustice in life, unfairness and injustice, and I sensed an injustice here and that we needed to correct it. So I'm going to finish on, uh, you'll be pleased to hear, the seven success factors, which is a... Uh, a sort of a theory I developed over spending several years talking and listening to bureaus about how they succeed. And the most successful ones have implemented um, all or most of these. In fact, Tracy Jerram there has, um, has this on, printed on the wall at the, at the bureau and um, I know one or two others have as well. These are the key pieces and I can provide you with more information if you wish. There's a, there's a couple of pieces on LinkedIn about it. Um, these are the key success factors. Partners have to buy into the future of payroll to it being a profitable uh, area of business um, for them. You've got to take control of the payroll process, of the clients, of the partners, um, uh, of pricing, uh, which comes next. You've got to be responsible for pricing. Uh, that's absolutely critical. Reframe what you do, understand your clients deeply, I think you already do probably on that, and get creative about your approach. These are the success factors. So it's um, it's sort of it's almost with a tear in my eye now that uh, I, having helped with the support of the founders and others and the backing of, of people who I've worked with over the years, uh, to have got it to this stage is really, uh, it means a lot to me. And um, I, I wish you tons of success. Make it happen. You do deserve much more success. And uh, at that point, <laughs> I shall... <laughs> I shall back off and leave it to everyone. Have a great, uh, great session. Thanks, Barry. Much appreciated. Uh, so I think Barry raised some key points there. And I think one that stands out for me is we do love, we, we thrive on pressure. I don't think any of us get to two o'clock and ever say we've got nothing to do. Uh, there's always something to do. 
and one partner made a phrase to me that we're not busy people, we're busy fools. And it's so true. We, we take on far too much work because we care. We care about our clients' employees. We care about our clients, but we take pride uh, in what we do. And that's some of the key themes that Tracy's just going to put on screen just now. That actually, I think we, we can all agree we've been through this journey so far together, but it's how we, we take this forward now. And if you think back to, to RTI, I, I kind of looked out the initial specification document and the words on the opening line of the document back in 2012 was, RTI brings PAYE into the 21st century and makes it easy for employers to run payroll. Now, I don't think I've met anyone that would say to me they had an easy year on the introduction eh, of RTI, whether that was duplicated tax records eh, on, on the phone with HMRC, trying to explain why a minimum wage worker shouldn't be on a D1 tax code, which to you and I is fairly straightforward why HMRC eh, couldn't grasp that. However, I would say we are running fairly smoothly just now, but eh, I did have flashbacks to the dreaded employer alignment submission and the should we submit it, shouldn't we submit it, and I think all of us did take the approach that we'll just fire it through anyway and just hope for the best, because submitting something is better than submitting nothing. Uh, which moved us nicely on to, to auto-enrollment. Uh, again, the, the guidance for the larger employers that back in 13, 2012, 2013, was just, it, it was far too much for a payroll department to, to understand. However, they did. They, they embraced it. Uh, we embraced it as a sector. And actually, you spend your time doing more of a research role. And that goes back to Barry's earlier point about we're, we're juggling so many things. We jump from being a technical manager to being a people manager to being a relationship manager and managing operational aspects of the payroll department, whether that's internal budgets on staffing or your own KPIs with your finance team. Uh, and then, of course, we've got our lovely accountants keep us on our toes with debts, because it's your job as well to collect when clients don't pay. Uh, and I think it makes us very, very rounded people and one thing, joining the PBA and working with the founding members that I found was we lack confidence in ourselves. We're very confident in our knowledge, but we lack confidence in actually enforcing change, standing up and saying, let's genuinely stand together and make a change. I am not happy with this process. I don't understand this and we all feel the same. What can you do to help us? Uh, which takes us into, I think, our recent few months uh, with COVID-19 and the furlough scheme and, and pulling some figures off last night. It's 17.5 billion has been claimed uh, in furlough uh, monies for UK PYE employers. Uh, and that's quite a scary statistic to think that all of us on this call right now have had a part to play in that figure. Uh, and you know, again, satisfaction and, and being a payroller, you do all of the hard work and then your claim goes in in three or four minutes. And it's just, you wish there was that extra bit of pain because all of the hard work was done by you behind the scenes on spreadsheets, calculators, and your payroll system. Uh, and I know for me, liaising with a variety of clients, uh, some of the, the finance teams at your client size just couldn't appreciate what was difficult about the pro rata top up starting for low mid period or that variable painful exercise we go through with the prior year when in your head you really want to just say let's just play pay everyone a flat 500 pounds and move on but as payroll people we don't because we take pride in getting it right uh, which takes me on to our, uh, our clients we, we love them and we hate them but i think we'll all agree that, that our clients pay our wages, and that is the most important thing. We would love to have Little Miss Sunshine on every client, or Little Miss Sunshine, we don't discriminate at the PBA, but we would love a bunch of happy clients, but we all have that one client that just is never happy, never happy that the component is on the right-hand side, never happy that the journal doesn't square, even though you know that journal is wrong, 
the client's always right. And we, we spend all of that time working with these clients. But actually, the question I would ask in speaking with other founding members is, if that client was genuinely really unhappy, they would move on. But the reason they don't move on is probably because they have confidence in you and confidence in the person that's delivering that service. And yes, it would be great to have a thank you, but I don't actually think that's what we want. We want to just do a good job, move on, and actually continue learning and work together. And that's the key thing for me as the PBA. And when you do see other businesses over the years, the PBA is not about competition. We're not about sharing state secrets with each of our bureaus. We're actually about coming together as one and sharing knowledge sharing our experiences and helping enforce change and hopefully potentially get that advert off the TV that claims QuickBooks can run your payroll with ease in three minutes. Uh, when I see that at night, it, it does frustrate uh, the hell out of me because you know fine well you've spent the best part of a week one of your larger clients and the advert on TV just makes it look super easy and there's nothing to do in payroll. All we do is plop in some figures. Uh, so Tracy, if you wouldn't mind moving on to the next slide for me, and I will run through some of our founding members, or all of our founding members, uh, as part of the PBA, and that's in no particular order. Uh, we have Haig Kingston, who's Head of Client Services at Paycheck. So Haig brings a different dimension to the group. It's, it's a non-technical background. Haig's bringing his account management experience uh, from both software and front-facing clients. So Hague's on the, the front end quite a lot of the time with some of the, the larger clients. Uh, myself, from Johnston Carmichael. Uh, then we have Tracy. Uh, our, Tracy keeps us in line. Tracy's our, our commercial uh, director at Cox & Co and does not let us go out of line. Tracy is the true boss behind the scenes and has been marching us around this morning, which has been fantastic to make sure this is a success today. And I know she's sitting there probably smiling right now, embarrassed. Uh, we then have Adam, who brings, Adam Flight brings another uh, interesting aspect, which is an HR uh, rounded experience. Adam uh, is very experienced and that's where his background comes from. And I think, like Barry said, people fall into payroll. No one does openly say, I think I'd like to proactively be a payroller when they leave school. Uh, so Adam brings a different perspective uh, in that respect. We have Julie Mason from pm and uh, Julie is Payroll Operations Manager and again brings that, that kind of long-standing history of operational experience. Neil Cameron, Head of Payroll at Sheen and Tate uh, and Tracy Simpson, uh, Head of Payroll at Moore and Smalley. Again, both bringing that on-the-ground technical and uh, people experience. Linda Kelly brings a, a fresh aspect of the accounting background. So we don't judge Linda for being an accountant, but Linda did fall into payroll and we welcome that uh, experience and exposure that Linda has had uh, in working on the founding group and working with team members. We learned quite quickly that, that Linda shared that insight that we always fear that accountants have, that payroll is easy. And one thing Linda did mention for us that until she did start in payroll, she hadn't appreciated uh, the pressure uh, that we're under day to day. Then we have Emma Lambert uh, and Leslie Hewer, both operational hands on, and that's from Jackson Stephen and Gail of Cork. And then lastly, Linda Burt uh, from All Three Media, and you know, like, uh, like others, like Linda uh, Adam, she brings a, a different experience, historically a background in accountancy bureau, but Linda focuses more on the media industry uh, and has shared some interesting stories of being either in their London office one day and then the next day she can be on the film set of a movie. Uh, so it's quite interesting and, and very different, I think, to, to what we all have. And I think, Tracy, if you could just bring up the next part of that slide for me, please. So just to, to bring this all together as a focus, hopefully I've explained that we acknowledge payroll as such an emotive, it's an emotive sector, it's an emotive thing. And the, the PBA really wants to actually just raise awareness of that and actually work as one united voice. And that's not just with, with the founding members, that's with all of you and your colleagues and your future colleagues. Uh, and we really want to be 
that collective voice of, of all the providers. So no matter who you work for, whether that's an accountancy or dedicated payroll provider, or whether you are a sole trader, a accountant, we want to hear from you and we want that to be part of our kind of foundations uh, as an association. Provide, promote the, the vital role that, that payroll serves. So whether that's through initially starting off with LinkedIn, but I know one day we'd love to have a press release to actually say how many members we have and maybe have an insight into what each individual member is bringing. Uh, and Neil's going to talk a bit more about that uh, in the next session. Then to uphold legislation, regulation and best practice, we'd love to get together a list of almost a mission statement and something that we all buy into that we can actually work as one. Uh, and we've all had a difficult bureau, and for, there's none on the, the call today, but we've all had that bureau that's quite difficult in terms of providing data. If a client's joining you from somewhere else and one thing we all agreed uh, at our first meeting at the PBA was why? At the end of the day, we're all doing a job for a client. There doesn't need to be that competitiveness or bitterness when a client does move around uh, as, as we are part of you know, one PBA. I think lastly, to, to drive through change and, and work with the, the regulated bodies like HMRC, like the pensions regulator, and actually get us involved. We are the people on the ground. We are the people that, that have the clients come to us wanting the answers. So we are the best people to, tr to drive that change. Uh, and people like Kate Upgraft have been fantastic uh, in actually helping us do that. But again, Kate is only one person. And together we want to support people like Kate to actually influence that change and make change happen. Uh, so hopefully that gives you a, a summary of our story so far. We are still in infancy. Uh, we are very early on in our journey. But again, we really wanted to kick this off in the midst of our thrilling COVID-19 because we were going to wait, but we felt, let's just get this, get everyone involved and let you know that we actually have somewhere for you to come, somewhere to share your knowledge and share your ideas. So I'll now pass you over to Neil Cameron, a Head of Payroll at Sheen and Tate, just to run through a, a bit about the future and how you can get involved. So over to you, Neil. Thank you, Michael, uh, and good morning, everyone. Uh, firstly, uh, as I've said to my team on several occasions, the most important aspect <coughs> excuse me, of the current situation is health, uh, and I do hope that uh, everyone uh, and their families are, are keeping safe and well. It's incredible to, to think it's been three months since we held the UK-wide meeting that Barry organised in Manchester. The, the time has moved really quickly since then. However, despite uh, the challenges with social distancing, uh, in that time we have, of course, launched the, the PBA. Uh, so in the, the next five minutes, and it is just five minutes, uh, or so I'd like to provide some further information on the, the structure of the PBA, the timeline uh, to complete our aims and goals, uh, and most importantly, the future of the PBA and how you fit in, how you can get involved, and how we can work together. Uh, First of all, I'd like to give a, a short update on the work going on behind the scenes of the PBA. Uh, the lead members of the, the PBA are working to formalise a, a detailed working framework for the association. Uh, initial discussions with an advisor have taken place uh, and we're now uh, pushing this forward. Uh, in respect of the, the structure of the PBA, um, we as payroll professionals have identified uh, initial roles and responsibilities uh, for which lead members uh, will take ownership. Now, this uh, is not exhaustive uh, and we will introduce other roles and responsibilities as the PBA evolves uh, and possibly after the survey that will be issued to members within the next week, uh, Haig will provide more detail on the survey in a few minutes. So we've identified the following areas for which is just a, a high level overview. Uh, first of all, uh, marketing and PR. Uh, finance, uh, legal and infrastructure, and really more in connection with membership. Um, we're looking at membership benefits uh, and engagement uh, with our members, the education and uh, training the section, which is really important where we're looking at qualifications and things, especially for the, the bureau sector. 
um, software uh, and uh, applications and uh, work life and careers. So th th these are the, the initial areas that we would like to cover within the lead team of the PBA uh, with the aim of providing support to, to members uh, in these areas or, or more. So, you know, get in touch if, you, you know, you think that we should be looking in other areas, please complete the, the survey that, that Hague will come on to shortly. Uh, in respect of, of timeline, uh, we have planned to, to work on the structure of the PBA for the remainder of this calendar year. Uh, with the aim to have membership levels for individuals in place for the beginning of 2021. Uh, our aim is then to launch corporate membership uh, over the next one to two years. Uh, we've really come a long way in a, a short period of time gaining momentum uh, and all the founding members are committed to this timescale. Um, we will issue regular communication on and updates uh, as we move through uh, this year. Um, so, so here's the most important part, uh, how you will fit in and ways to connect with other members. Um, we want the membership to expand uh, and support each other uh, and become the voice of the profession. So firstly, get involved. Uh, the payroll bureau profession has long been needing a voice to promote the important role that we play that affects so many people uh, and organisations. Uh, the more members we have actively, the louder the voice will be. Uh, we've already had a great response uh, with contact from respected individuals within the profession uh, who are all keen to support the PBA. Connect with other members uh, and help to grow and promote the association. Uh, over 200 members in our LinkedIn group is a tremendous start since we launched last month. And ask questions, please use our, our platforms. Questions can then jump into ideas and then that benefits uh, everyone in the association. Make suggestions and recommendations, uh, all are welcome. Uh, we'll, we'll of course take on board all suggestions. Please invite and encourage friends and colleagues from the Bureau community to join. Uh, our aim is to be the go-to association for payroll bureau matters. We will be setting up regular video calls uh, where we can get together for discussion, both formal uh, and informal, uh, details of which will, will follow in due course. And, and please take part in our surveys. We want to hear from you, which will help us to provide the range of support uh, that is just not available at, at the moment. Um, we would like to support our members to the same level that other accountancy and finance financial bodies uh, support their members. Uh, the payroll profession has never been uh, more in the spotlight and our association can grow and evolve into a body that constructively serves the, the payroll bureau community. So in summary, we're working on the framework uh, of the association with the aim to have membership levels for individuals formed for the beginning of 2021 with corporate membership uh, to be launched in a year or two. And from you, please be active in the group, interact with other members, Please give us your, your suggestions uh, and recommendations and complete the survey uh, and let's, let's stay connected uh, and be uh, interactive. The PBA lead team is committed to deliver the infrastructure and support uh, for the payroll bureau profession that, that really is, is deserved. Um, we look forward to, to a, a strong and close association with you all. So, so thanks for, for listening to my section there. I will now pass on uh, to Haig. Thanks. Thank you, Neil, and uh, thank you for everyone that's joined. Um, you'll be pleased to know my section isn't that long either, so we're shortly coming to a close. Um, but I just want to air the, the comments that Michael, Barry, Neil have all mentioned that the, uh, the, the, the sector is under huge pressure and you're doing a fantastic job, so keep up the hard work. I, I, can, I can say that quite confidently because I don't have to run payroll, so uh, I, um, I don't envy you guys at all. So, look, it, it's really important to us that uh, your opinion counts. Um, in a, as we quite rightly say on, on screen here, your voice will shape the future of the PBA and we will be posting a survey very shortly and this survey is not in, in regards to today's webinar, it's in regards to how you wish the PBA to be formed and, and what areas you'd like us to cover. Um, you know, more so than ever, we want to ensure that as an association we're covering everything that you want to see. Um, we're guided by you, you, our members, so that you can get full value from us as, a, as an association too. Um, so bear with us, we'll put together a, a survey, we'll be publishing it on our LinkedIn group 
If you haven't already done so, please do go ahead and join. And that's where you can post any comments or questions and actually access the survey itself. Um, so if you want to move on to the next slide, please, Tracy. So with regards to questions, um, oh, just go back one. There we go. Um, with regards to questions, we have received a few questions already this morning. So what, what I'll do is I'll just run through a couple just to give you a flavour as to what's been asked. Um, can I invite colleagues to, to the weekly Zoom calls or, or other webinars? Of, of course, look, we want to build our membership because it's important that we attract those who work in the payroll bureau sector. Um, we would strongly advise that they join the LinkedIn group as that makes it easier for us to reach them and represent them individually going forward as well. You know, it's an open forum. We'd really like to take those uh, individual forums and Zoom meetings that were held through the, the furlough madness uh, and take them forward as well, so that we have a, you know, a, one, a one place for everyone to come together, air their fears, concerns, successes, rewards, whatever it may be, we want to hear from you. Um, so it's important that you in, invite a colleague to, because it's an open forum. Um, will you share survey results with us? Absolutely. Look, we need to, you know, we need your input, we need your help to direct the PBA towards meeting its aims and objectives. We have collated the information that we published on LinkedIn uh, and we'll use this as a basis to take us forward. Um, and look, without, without question, as it comes back to that your opinion really does matter to us. Um, so we can get it into the place in which it needs to be. But if you do have any other questions at any time, you can submit these via the LinkedIn group if it's an open question, perhaps for other members to, to pitch in and, and to respond to, or if you wanted a, a, you know, a dedicated response that maybe you want on an individual level, then we do have a, an email uh, address set up, which is payrollbureauassociation at gmail.com, which all of us as founding members can access and can respond to you directly. Um, so if you wanted to ask a question, perhaps to the individual, or you wanted to keep it private, then, then please do, um, and we'll, we'll respond to you in due course. And like with any other questions that we've received today through the webinar, that we'll, we'll post the answers on the group so that people can see the types of questions being asked. Um, or if, as I say, if you want to ask a personal question, then, then, then please just submit a question across the email. And we'll, we'll also share that if you, if you feel it's important for, for others to see as well. Um, but look, thank you for your time. And look, the last message from me is to interact with us, ask questions, converse with us on the LinkedIn group, we're all here to support each other, here to support the sector and, and to push it in the right direction. So thanks for your time. And uh, I'll pass you back to Michael, who will do the, the, the roundup of today. Brilliant. Thanks for that, Hague. And I think that's a key thing there, uh, just to really emphasise, we, we do this in our spare time. Uh, we're, we're not paid for this role. Uh, if anyone would like to pay us, please feel free, but we're not paid a salary for this role at all. Uh, but we need you we can't drive this on our own, we do need you, that's a key thing. So if anyone does have any problems with LinkedIn, that you would like 10 minutes with one of the founding members, more than happy to organise that and, and just explain the various parts of LinkedIn. And I know haig has been doing that for, for quite a few already, which has been fantastic. Uh, so, and as Neil said uh, as well, the survey is going to come out shortly. So please do take part in that and just spread the word for us. So reach out to your colleagues at uh, various competitors in, in the market and actually just find out, do, do you agree with, with what we're trying to achieve? Uh, are you passionate about it? Do you think we're totally in the wrong direction or, or do you think we've, we've captured uh, the, the general feelings uh, of the sector? Uh, and that's the key thing for me. So a huge thank you to all our speakers uh, and the team behind the scenes uh, of the founding team and for this webinar, that was, I think, Adam and Tracy eh, have been working hard behind the scenes eh, overnight and this morning to make this happen. Eh, and to our speakers, eh, Haig and Neil, and our guest speaker, Barry eh, from, from Pay Circle. Eh, we are recording this, eh, and we're likely to, to potentially share this eh, over the, the coming days for anyone that has missed it. But other than that, for me, please do stay safe, and I hope you enjoyed today's session. So have a good day, and thank you.